My name is Kurt Brundage. In 2012, I was teaching high school English, and I had an inappropriate relationship with a 15-year-old student. Two years later, I was arrested, and seven months after my arrest, I was sentenced to 25 months in prison. I spent my 25 months in prison doing everything that I could to make me a better me. Uh, my, my, my perspective in that was that if I had to spend that 25 months in prison, I wasn't going to make that wasted time. I was going to genuinely make an attempt at being a better person. Uh, I spent my time in Winfield, Kansas for the first third of my sentence and then was shipped off to the Lansing Correctional Facility in Lansing, Kansas, where I received a sex offender treatment program. And a lot of the guys in my group went in and saying things like, I'm just going to tell the therapist what she wants to hear. I'm just going to try to get through this. But that wasn't my perspective. I, mean, I again, had this, this positive attitude that if I had to be in this treatment program and I knew that there was something wrong with me, that I was going to make the best of it and I was going to take something away from it. And as, as a result, therapy in prison absolutely changed my life. In my life, becoming a better person was a plus. But I have this continuing drive to do more than that. I am striving to combat the problem to which I very tragically contributed. I contributed to a, the biggest epidemic that is plaguing the American educational system right now. Teachers are having relationships with students um, at an alarming rate. And the scary part is a majority of those are never reported. A majority of these relationships are never known about it is simply something that is either hidden or forgotten or swept under the rug so that reputations don't get ruined, so that schools don't get uh, sued. I am trying to come out, stand in front of educators and say, I went through this and here is why this actually happens. School systems right now are trying to address the wrong problem. School systems now, every time this happens, always address hiring practices. They always say things like, well, we're, we're hiring these deviants, we're hiring these pedophiles, we're hiring these, te these terrible people. There's got to be a way for us to not hire them. My contention is that when teachers are hired, they're not being hired for the expressed uh, goal of having a relationship with an underage student uh, or even an 18 year old student. That is not their goal. It becomes an overtime sense of a cognitive distortion that makes the unreasonable seem reasonable. Everybody thinks, well, my situation is different. That draws me to this idea that school systems are trying to solve the wrong problem. Let's try to solve the right problem. Let's solve the problem of teachers in giving themselves a perspective of thinking that it's okay because so much other uh, unacceptable behavior is okay. It seems acceptable that drugs during school by teachers is something we don't talk about, but everybody knows it's going on. It seems acceptable that teachers party harder than the students. Granted, it's, it's teachers' right to go out and have a beer after work. And if that was all it was, then that would be no big deal. But it was my own personal experience going on Friday nights with teachers uh, out to a bar down the street from our school, uh, seeing teachers smoking pot, uh, sniffing cocaine in the bathrooms, uh, a pair of teachers uh, wandering out to the parking lot for 15 minutes, coming back, disheveled clearly what they had been doing in a car. I mean, this was just, this was the normal behavior. And so the culture itself 
was disrupted. Now, all that being said, I don't blame any of that for what I did. It is nobody's fault. It was not the culture's fault for my choices. It was not the administration's fault for my choices. I made those choices. I am ashamed of those choices. I will never forgive myself for those choices because I blame me and me only. I wrote this book for two reasons. I wrote this book to make it real, to show what a real teacher goes through when this happens. And I wrote this book to address the real problem so that the real problem can have a real solution. The book itself mixes narrative with research. It, go, it, it bounces back and forth a little bit between my personal experience and my own research into the issue itself. I want it to seem real. I'll give you an example. Uh, a teacher who is an appropriate teacher will be watching the news some night and will see a teacher on TV going to jail for having a relationship with, stu with a student. And we'll think, well, that, that's just atrocious. I can't believe that. The teacher is, is obviously sick, and we just, this is just unacceptable. And then the news story is over. That teacher uh, goes on with his life and goes back to school working and forgets about that teacher that he saw on TV. My goal is to show what happens to that teacher after he's arrested, after he goes to prison, and after he gets released back into society and has to put his life back together. I mean, this is what a ruined life looks like. There's more to it than just being on TV and going to prison. Too many teachers try to, after prison, for doing this, just stay quiet, stay under the radar because they're ashamed. Well, I'm taking my shame and I'm making it an outward goal of standing up, saying what I did, and saying how to solve it. This is solved by changing the conversation. The conversation is errant. The conversation is teachers who have relationships with students are sick, mentally ill, perverts, pedophiles, sickos, and that really isn't the case. There's a scene in the movie Seven that illustrates my point perfectly. I've been trying to figure something in my head, and maybe you can help me out, yeah? When a person is insane, as you clearly are, do you know that you're insane? Maybe you're just sitting around, reading guns and ammo, masturbating in your own feces. Do you just stop and go, wow, it is amazing how fucking crazy I really am. Yeah? Do you guys do that? It's more comfortable for you to label me insane. It's very comfortable. That is the problem. It is so much easier to reference teachers who have made these choices as sick, pedophile, weird, perverted. It's, it's easy to point fingers and use malicious words because if we consider the possibility that these are normal people who made bad decisions, then all of a sudden anybody is able to make a bad decision. And we don't want to think that about ourselves. We want these people to be in a completely separate and shameful group. But if you're talking about a pathology there, I think if you're trying to say that there is a genuine pathology, then the, the situation is not going to be solved. Now, granted, there are teachers who do have a pathology, who are attracted to uh, young students. I mean, my message is not meant for someone on the elementary school level. A person who is attracted to elementary age children, that is a pathology I don't even want to dive into. My aim is at high school teachers who begin to see their students as equals and as they see their students as equals they begin to see their students as perhaps friends. Uh, here's, here's an example of what teachers perspectives are changing to. 
think of an office building with a maze of cubicles. Say you're uh, you know, a computer company by chance where everybody works together uh, in a big building. Some of these people, hundreds even, uh, will become friends, will become co-workers who become friends and do after work drinks, for example. And of those people, some will inevitably start up workplace relationships. I mean, this is the norm in American society where workplace relationships are not uncommon, be it married or not. Um, this happens. So my contention is the, the primary reason that teachers are having relationships with students is because they adopt that mentality of workplace relationships and as a result by seeing students as peers they're not attracted to the students because of their age. Age just simply ceases to be a factor when it should be the primary factor. The key is to teach teachers how to maintain that perspective at all times. Granted, a vast majority of teachers will never struggle with this. Then again, we see it on the news every day, every week. It is so easy to hit Google and find the latest teacher who had a relationship with a student. So obviously the problem is real and the problem persists. If we consider the possibility that these are normal people who made bad decisions, then all of a sudden anybody is able to make a bad decision. And we don't want to think that about ourselves. We want these people to be in a completely separate and shameful group. What I'm trying to do is say, if you're not one of these people, I am so happy for you and I'm glad. Now, let's try to find the people who are. I'm not just trying to keep teachers from having a relationship with students. I'm trying to help teachers find the teachers who are having relationships with students. This is a two-pronged endeavor. Not just don't do this, but here's how to catch them. Because I should have been caught long before I was caught. The problem will persist until the correct problem is addressed.